On this video, we will learn how to solve for NMR problem or interpret NMR spectra. In many undergraduate organic chemistry courses, students are often asked to figure out what is the structure of an organic molecule with the provided NMR spectra. For an example, students are given the chemical formula of the substance along with the proton NMR and the carbon NMR and sometimes IR information as well. And from these three pieces of information, come up with the structure of the organic molecule. Solving for NMR problem can actually be really fun. If you enjoy solving word puzzle or any types of puzzle, you will enjoy solving for NMR problem. And a lot of times, students really enjoy this and they're good at it. And this is basically their favorite part of organic chemistry. Now, in order to come, come up with the structure of the organic molecule, let's now go over the step how to solve NMR problem. So in order to solve for NMR problem, there's certain steps that we should follow in order to make it easiest. And these are the steps. The first step is to find the degree of unsaturation. This is also known as the double bond equivalent. And the equation to calculate the degree of unsaturation is as follow. 2 times the number of carbon plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen minus the number of halogen plus the number of nitrogen and divided by 2. You, we should always come up with a whole number when we solve for the degree of unsaturation. If we end up with a decimal number, then that means we have not done this calculation correctly. And as a reminder, a ring and a double bond each have one degree of unsaturation. A benzene ring has four degree of unsaturation. A triple bond has two degree of unsaturation. So please keep that in mind. And the second step is to identify the signal of pieces based on the integration number and the chemical shape. This is where you will then go to the NMR spectra and focus on the proton NMR and identify the pieces from there. If we were to see pieces signal from 6.5 to 9 ppm with the overall integration number of 4 to 5, then very likely it means that we will have a benzene ring. If the degree of unsaturation from 6.5 to 9 is equal to 4 in this area, then we will then have a disubstituted benzene ring. And that when you need to look at the pattern to figure out whether it's ortho, meta, or para. If the overall integration from 6 to 9 is then equal to 5, then that would then mean we will have a monosubstituted benzene ring. And if we would have signal at about 4 ppm or lower, depending on their integration number and the chemical shift, they can have different meaning to them. For an example, if the oval integration is 3, then very likely we will have a CH3 group. Only when we have a CH3 group that this 3 hydrogen right here would be equivalent, and therefore they give us the same signal, thus raise up the intensity of this signal, therefore its integration num number would then equal to 3. If we were to have an, an integration number equal to 2, then that will again mean we have a CH2 group. And if we would have integration equal to 1, then that means we will have a CH group. And if we would have to have the integration equal to 4, then that does not mean that we will have a CS4, because a CS4 would be a molecule by itself already. So that would not be correct. But very likely, it would then mean that we have two equivalent CS2. So there'd be 2S2, the equivalent because they connect to the same other piece. And similarly, if we were to have an integration equal to 6, then very likely it means we have two equivalent CS3. So the two CS3 are connected to the same thing. Therefore, they are equivalent. And now, if we would have signal from 4.5 to 6.5, again, these are the chemical shift range for alkene. That when we we'll be thinking about the alkene possibility. The integration 
for this area right here in this region will then tell us how many hydrogen that the alkene would have. And if we were to see signal from 9 to 11 ppm, then very likely it means we have an aldehyde. And if we were to see signal from 11 to 14 ppm, then very likely that would then co correspond to the carboxylic acid. Now, if we would have a carboxylic acid, remember again that the OH normally show up as a singlet, and it is a pretty broad singlet. And they do not have any sort of multiplicity to it. Versus the signal from the aldehyde tend to be very sharp and has multiplicity to it. And as another reminder, if we were to have OH as in alcohol, so this would be alcohol, and we have amine and H, then they tend to show up from 0.5 to 5 ppm. And the signal are always a singlet, and they are broad singlet as well from 0.5 to 5 ppm. Once we have identified the pieces in the step two already, find out what is remaining. So basically calculate the molecular formula for all the pieces that we came up in step two, and then subtract it from the given molecular formula to find out how many of the other atoms do we have remaining. And once we know what is remaining already, we will try to come up what to try to find out what the other pieces could be and keep in mind the degree of unsaturation and use carbon-13 and IR to double check for carbonyl and alkene. And step five, connect the pieces to form larger pieces. And we would then do so based on the multiplicity and the chemical shift of the signal. Try to identify this as much as we can and only connect the pieces that we know for certain. Do not guess, because the more we guess, the more we tend to be leading in the wrong direction. So do not guess, but if we don't know something, we leave it the way it is. And step six, list all the larger pieces that we came up with from the step five, and then connect the pieces together to form a larger molecule. And we may be able to come up with several structure that would meet the spectra. And lastly, double check to see which of the structure we came up with would have all of the matching information to the proton NMR, the carbon NMR, and the IR. Let's now try an example. So here in this case right here, we are given the chemical formula along with proton NMR and carbon NMR. We are not given IR information here in this case, but again, we should be able to solve for the structure of the organic molecule without using IR information. So here in this case, following the step, the first step is to find the degree of unsaturation. And here in this case, the degree of unsaturation is then equal to two times the number of carbon, which is 13 plus two, minus the number of hydrogen. And in this case, it is 17 and minus halogen. In this case, we have one chlorine, so we would minus one. We do not have any nitrogen, so we do not anything, and we don't do anything for the oxygen, and divided by two. So in this case, we have the degree of unsaturation equal to five. And second step, go to the signal and identify the pieces. So here is how we would do it. In this case, starting from anywhere on the spectra, either from the left or the right. In this case, we see signal as about 7 to 7.5 ppm. And this signal right here, due to the chemical shift, we know that they would correspond to the benzene hydrogen. And in this case, please make this correction. This is actually two. So this where is where we will be adding all the integration number together. One plus one plus two, then equal to four. So that tells us that we will then have a benzene ring. And in this case right here, the benzene ring will then be disubstituted. Now, it is possible for us to figure out how the benzene ring will be disubstituted. And here in this case, we have a triplet, and we see have a singlet in here. 
and two doubler with doublet because of this singlet right here that tell us that this is basically meta so now we know this is meta connecting to the two other other two groups and similarly go down to this piece so here we see signal below 4 ppm so we know that this are carbon that are corresponding to the sp3ch and here in this case this a based on this e have an integration equal to 2 so this e a c is 2 and this one right here because of an integration equal to 2 there will be a c is 2 as well and this one a c is 2 and this one a ch and this one have the degree have the overall integration equal to 6 so that means there will be 2 c is 3 and now this are symmetrical so that would be the pieces right there that we have identified so far. And the next step is to calculate what is remaining. If we were to add all of this up, in this case, the four hydrogen over here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus uh, six in here, that make up 17. So we basically have 17 hydrogen. And now let's add up the carbon. So we have in this case right here, six carbon, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 hydrogen. So if we were to subtract this from the ori original chemical formula, we would have C12, it's 17. Subtracting that, we would then have one carbon remaining, one chlorine remaining, and one oxygen remaining. So these are the atoms that we have remaining. And now let's see what we can come up with it. If we were to count all of our un unsaturation numbers so far, we have four degree of unsaturation from this benzene ring. And none of the pieces in here give us another degree of unsaturation. And we saw that this molecule right here has five degree of unsaturation. So that means that there is one degree of unsaturation that must have come from these pieces. So here in this case right here, there has to be a carbon, a double bond in here. And very likely it will be a carbonyl. And that way we will then check with the carbon NMR and the IR to see if there is a carbonyl. And here in this case, we have a signal here at about 210 ppm and very likely this is of carbonyl. So therefore, this indicate that of all of these three atoms that we have left, there is a carbonyl. And now there is another chlorine connected to it. Another chlorine piece. So that will be all of the pieces that we have so far. And now, let's see if any of these pieces right here can be connected together. So we will now connect the pieces based on the chemical shelf and their multiplicity to form larger pieces. So here in this case, this is how we would do it. So when we look at this CS2 right here, this CS2 is split into a triplet and the chemical shift is about 3.7 ppm. So it pretty de it and it begins to split into a triplet. In order for it to be a triplet, it has to connect to a CS2. And in a molecule, we have several CS2 in here. So this CS2 right here would either be connected to the CS2 over here or the CS2 over here. So which CS2 do you connect to? The answer, this one, but not the one above. And the reason why if this CS2 were to connect to the CS2 from above, then it would split in, then it will make this CS2 right here become a triplet as well. But here in this case, this is a singlet. So therefore we know that this CS2 cannot be connected to this CS2 on, on top, but it has to be this CS2. And if that is true, then this CS2 right here would also be connected, will be split into a triplet as well. And in this case, it is a triplet. So therefore, we know that these two pieces right here will be connected together. And now, this CS2, if this CS2 were to connect to CS2, it would not be that de-shielded. So we know now, in order for it to be this de-shielded right here, it has to connect to something that the electron would draw in. And here in this case right here, we have several things that would make this CS2 be that de-shielded. 
very likely it would then be a cloning. So in this case, we know that it connected to a cloning. And when this CH2 is connected to this cloning, it will not be split any further. So therefore, it remains a triplet. And now a chemical shift would, about, would be about 3.7 or 3.8 ppm. So now that our pieces, one of our big larger piece. And when we come to over here, we see this CH right here is split into a heptet. So this is a heptet right here. So that means that it needs to be connected to a lot of neighboring hydrogen. And now we know, so we know that this CH cannot be connected to this CH2, but there are two other metal groups in here that it could be connected to. And that would then be correct, that it be connected to this two metal group in here. Because only when it connected this two metal group that it would be split into a heptap. And this C is, and this two C is metal group over here, if they were to be connected to this CH, then that when they'll be split into the doublet that they have or that we see in here. So therefore we now know that this CH is connected to this to both two of this CS3. And we can now both of these are connected to this CH. They are now equivalent. And that's why they give the same signal in here. And now we don't know what this CS2 is connected to. So we keep it the way it is. And now let's list all of the larger pieces that we have. So far we have a benzene ring that it dies substituted. And it met that. And we have a CS2, CH2, Cl. And we have a CH connected to a CH3 group and a CH3 group. So it had to connect it somewhere else. And we also have the carbon nail as well. So right now we have four pieces and we have to connect them together. Now we know that this CH3 right here, because this would be one end of the molecule. So only this end will be connected to something else. And similarly for this isopropyl group, this end will be connected to somewhere else. So that would then mean that these are the two pieces right here that are in the middle. And now let's connect them. So looking back at this spectra, we see that this CH right here, it chemical shift is about 2.7 ppm. So it have to connect to something that is electron withdrawing. And here in this case, if this were to be connected to the benzene ring, that is when it will have that kind of chemical shift. So now we know that these two pieces right here are connected together. And, oh, and we also have another CS2 from above. And now this CS2 right here, if we were to look at this signal, it's chemical shift right now. So that would be somewhere about 2.8 ppm. So that means it also need to connect to something that electron withdrawing as well. And here in this case, it can be connected to a carbonyl. And this CS2 right here, a chemical shift is about 3.5 ppm. It pretty de -shielded. So right now in this case right here, it could be the piece that connect between the carbonyl and the benzene ring. So therefore, this is how we will connect them together. So we will then have this piece So we have the isopropyl group down here. That would make sense for a chemical shift. And we can have the CS2 followed by connecting to a carbonyl. And then the CS2, CS2, Cl. So that would be one possible way how we can connect all of this together. Now, will there be another possibility and the answer is, well, there could be. We could actually have this group in here, connect to this two group right here, swap in places. And in terms of chemical shift, that would still make sense. So the other possible structure would then be as follows. So both of this structure right here may, may be possible. 
and now let's double check to make sure that they would work so if we were to have this structure right here this ch right here will show up as a habitat and a chemical ship would then be about 2.5 to 3 ppm so in this case we do have that ch in here so that a check off and if we will have this two methyl group being show up as a doublet as about 1 ppm in this case we have this two signal so that we have this signal as well and this csu will show up as a singlet and it can be between a benzene ring and a carbonyl a chemical ship would be roughly about 3.5 and in this case we have that signal right there and this CS2 right here will show up as a triplet and at about 2 point something ppm and here in this case we do have a triplet as about 2 point something ppm and this CS2 right here it connected to a chlorine and a CS2 so it will show up as a triplet and a chemical shift will be about 3.5 to 3.8 ppm in this case we have that signal as well and the benzene ring signal are in here so basically every signal in here are accounted for so we know this structure would work and the stru structure down below would also work as well so in this problem there are two possible answers that we can come up with that would then fit the animal spectra and on this page right here this basically is a step-by-step -step guideline covering what I have this cover and if we were to now check this or the chemical ship generated by a software called ChemDraw and in this case right here it give us an approximate estimate of what the chemical ship would be and we will then see that they will be fitting for the animal spectra that we have and let's try another practice problem so in this case we are given the chemical formula C13H18O and this is this are its proton and carbon NMR data there's no IR information is given so from here let's try that follow the steps how to deduce or solve NMR problem and see if we can apply that to solve this problem right here so why don't you take a minute to a few minutes to solve this and we can go over the answer together so now let's go over the answer together so here in this case again the first step is to calculate the degree of unsaturation and in this case again du equal to 2 times the number of carbon which equal to 13 plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen in this case 18 and we do not have any halogen or nitrogen so we do not add and subtract or divide by 2 so this will then equal to 5 so 5 degree of unsaturation and the next step is to go to the proton animal spectra and identify the pieces based on the chemical shift and integration so here in this case right here we see signal from again 7 to about 7.5 ppm so we know that this will then correspond to aromatic hydrogen so in this case right here we know we have a benzene ring and we get the overall integration in here so we are given the overall integration here equal to 5 this would then mean the benzene ring is monosubstituted. And now going to this piece right here, base again, based on its integration number, identify the pieces. If the integration equal to 2, it will be a CH2. So we have a CH2 for that, a CH for this one, a CH3 for this one, a CH2 for this piece, a CH2 for this signal, and a CH3 for this signal. So those are the pieces that we can identify based on the integration number. So the next step is to find out what pieces do we have remaining. So let's see how many atoms that we have used up already as we come up with all of these pieces. So there's six carbon here, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And as for hydrogen, we have five here, we have two here one here and we have add all of this up equal to 18 so therefore the only thing we have remaining now with them would then be one carbon and one oxygen and now based on the pieces that we have identified 
it has only one degree of a uh, four degree of unsaturation from the benzene ring so we have one degree of unsaturation left and thus we have to make it out from the piece that we have remaining so we have one carbon and one oxygen remaining and somehow we have to give us the all the degree of unsaturation so that means that this has to be a carbonyl and to check for this carbonyl right here we will then go to carbon animal spectra if that's a given to us and in this case there you go we have it and if our information were to be given to us we would then expect this signal right here we will have expect to have a signal at about 1750 wave number and now let's see if we can figure out what uh, if any of these pieces right here would be connected together so let's do that so now this CSG right here is split into a triplet so that means it has to connect to a CS2 and here in this case right here there are two CS2 that we have we have this CS2 and we have another CS2 in here is it possible for us to figure out what it connected to now this CS2 right here split into a quartet and this one right here into a look like a multiplet so this is quite a little bit more complicated for us to figure out right here. So in this case right here, we don't know for sure if how did this CS2 is connected to any of this other CS2. So therefore, we leave it the way it is. And now in this case right here, we have this CS3 and this is now split into a triplet. So that means it connects to a CS2. But then there's many CS2 in here. Now this, okay. So in this case right here, because this CS2 right here is split into a triplet, so it connects to a CS2. And now, which of this CS2 would it be connected to? And in this case right here, we know it would be this CS2. And the reason why is because this split into a quartet. Only when this is connected to this CS3, that this signal will be split into a quartet. So now we know this is connected to that. And that will then further tell us that now this CS2 will be connected to that CS2. So again, don't guess, move on. And later on, as we have more information, we will be able to figure out how the pieces that we couldn't figure out earlier. And now in this case, and moving on to this one, we have a CH in here that is split into almost look like a multiplet. So this is rather a bit complicated, which we don't know. So thus, we're going to leave it there for now. And now let's connect them together based on what we know for sure. So we know that we have a CS2 connecting to a CS2. And we have a CS2 connecting to a CS3. Now this CS2 in here that we have, it cannot be connected to another carbon with hydrogen on it. So that will be the limitation that we have on this one. And the reason why if this CS2 were to be connected to any other CH, it will not be a triplet anymore. So therefore, we know that this group now need to be connected to something that do not have any hydrogen on it. And in this case right here, because a chemical shift is about 2.5, so we will then see that it have to connect to something that kind of withdraw electron from it. So here in this case right here, we have a carbonyl in here, and so it would then make sense that the carbonyl would be bonded to this group. So if that is true, the chemical shift with this would be somewhere about 2.5 ppm and it will be a triplet. And as for the other CS2 in here, so this CS2 is this signal. And right now, it has to connect it to something else with, with hydrogen on it. Else, it would not have the right multiplicity because in this case, this signal looks quite complex. So it looks like a multiplet. So you basically need to be connected to a north CH group. But now we know that this, this two CH2 could not be connected together. Because if this were to be connected together, they would not have this kind of chemical shock. But again, in this one right here, we don't know for sure. So we just leave it there for now. If we are unsure of something, just leave it there for now. And now we have this methyl group, and we know that this cannot be connected to anything else. 
but it should be connected to something that is slightly electron withdrawing so that way it will have the right chemical shape and here in this case right here we cannot connect this piece right here to the benzene ring directly because that would terminate this molecule so in this case right here it has to connect to this carbonyl right here so that way it would have the right chemical shape so therefore we would now have this piece we know that can be connected to this so that way we're going to put it and the only thing we have left right now would then be a CH and it would then make sense that this CH right here would then be connected to this so that way it will have the right multiplicity and the other CH2 in here would then also so this CH2 if this CS2 will also be split into a multiple as well. So in this case right here, we will then know that this is connected to a CH. And this piece right here, it also connected to that CH as well. So that way, this would then become a multiplet. And in this case right here, this in signal right here does look like a multiplet. And this one would show up as a multiplet as well. And this one right here would then show up as a multiplet as well. And now we only have the benzene ring left. So therefore, we now know this piece right here is then connected to the benzene ring. And overall, this is the structure of this molecule.